Lipahanto ke enga vida ni sakubata le fina hata sakadia na hia 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 ya hila ya hila ya hila 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 ha salika ando dosha ni hia please prepare the sahira salika radio veliata sakitea Let's set the beat up. He love us. He love us. He love us. Number one victory of prayer. Prayer is to be prayed with that season. God has called us to pray with that season. The word season is. Do not stop praying. Tell somebody, do not stop praying. Meaning that we ought to pray constantly. Prayer is the life that we live in the realms of the spirit. Prayer is a communion with the Father. Paul said, pray with a season. And Jesus said, Men ought to always pray. Can I ask you one question? Before you tell me all your problems, look here. Hey, hey. Before you go to that prophet, before you complain and say your life is not going forward, nobody cares for you, love, life is too tough, all right? Before you tell me all this nonsense, sorry to say that, I want to ask you first, have you prayed? You may say, yes, I have prayed. How constant and how diligent are you in prayer? Because the word says, pray with that season. Number two, men ought to always, always. So the key words in these two scriptures are, number one, pray with uh, say season. Somebody say season. season. Without season. Without season. Come on, pray without season. Number two, always pray. Always pray. So the question I'm going to ask you, do you pray with that season? Do you always pray? Now, you are what you do always. Why? Did Jesus say pray always? Because in the in our habit of prayer, we become who we commune with. By becoming who you commune with, you have access to seize his abilities, his power, his wisdom, and his potencies in dealing with every situation. Just like some of you are lazy, you want to become a billionaire by dreaming. <laughs> That's the problem. You want to wake up in the morning and become a billionaire. So it's not that way. Uh -uh. It is worked. Prayer is a walk. Just like you have to walk to become a multi billionaire, you ought to also walk in prayer. Nothing happens overnight. You must wake up to prayer. That's what God is speaking to the church. Wake up to prayer. If you don't take responsibility for yourself now and develop a habitual prayer, you will die in the future. I know it, it doesn't sound well, but if you can say, Lord, I am going to take on prayer. Huh? Let me tell you something. There, there were those who just died this week. Two years ago, they were as strong as you are now. So don't fool yourself that you feel well right now doesn't guarantee tomorrow. But I can guarantee tomorrow if you are a diligent man or woman of prayer. Amen. Number two, prayer increases your spiritual capacity. Prayer 
increases your spiritual capacity. Now look here. First Corinthians chapter 14 verse 4 and Jude chapter 1 verse 20. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But he that prophesies edifies the church. Now Jude chapter 1 verse 20. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, my faith is built, developed by prayer. Now, some of you here, your faith cannot deal with your troubles because of your prayerlessness. There is a faith in your spirit that needs the energy of, of prayer or the energy that comes from prayer to empower, to propel your faith to action. Now Jesus said to them that this kind go not away. You could not cast that spirit away because of your faithlessness. Your faith is too little. There's some of you here that Satan has messed up with your life. You try to engage your faith but your faith was dead. Inactive faith is likened to a battery. Your phone, some of you carry your phones. You know that you charge your phone every day, don't you? Prayer is like charging up, up your battery in the spirit. Faith in your spirit needs to be charged. There are some of you here, your faith is dead, dead, dead. Because you've not charged your faith. Prayer is what charges your faith. Your faith. The Bible says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Okay, there's a power in the in, on the inside of your spirit, the power of faith. But that faith comes alive through prayer. Some of you, your faith is dead. The battery, the battery of your faith is 10%. How dare you, how can you expect a voltage of 10,000 capacity problem to be handled by a voltage of 10%? You're kidding me. You're kidding me. How could you? Some problems that you're encountering needs 10,000 voltage of a release of faith to deal with. But your battery, your faith level is actually 10, 15 or even less than 5% because you have not charged up your faith. God said, now go home. And pray intentionally. Just know that every time you pray, you are building, you, you are developing your faith capacity. You're building up yourself. You're increasing in the spirit so that when you're confronted by any force of darkness, you can easily kick them off your way because your faith is active and strong. Shout hallelujah. Can I hear amen like a thunder, sons of God? Amen like a thunder, sons of God. There is nothing that can ever come against you that your faith is not capable of dealing with. But the problem is that sometimes your faith level is so weak. It's so little. Listen, we're entering into a very tough time. The Bible calls the, 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 the end times perilous times. Times of difficulties and times of attacks. And if your faith is not active and alive, you will die like a rat. Wake up. Improve, increase your faith level by prayers. Number three, prayer changes you. Prayer changes you. Luke chapter 9 verse 29. And as he prayed, somebody say, as he prayed, let's read together, I want to go. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. And his remnant was white and glistering. As he prayed, not when he was preaching, not when, not, not when.
when he was laying hands on people. Not when he was walking and reading the Bible. Uh -uh. Not when he was re reading a book. No. His countenance changed. Uh, his looks transformed because of prayer. You want to change in your life? Pray. You want the glory of God? Pray. You, 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 you want to get from me what prayer can give you. You're fooling. We, we, pastors and prophets and apostles have fooled you. Has they helped us? No. We are all pretending here. In this church, the truth will be told. How dare you expect to get a transformation through your pastor. You're, you, 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 you're fooling yourself. The Bible says the countenance of Christ was altered when he prayed. There is no change that you ever desire in your lifetime that cannot come through prayer. Have you ever asked yourself, how can we manifest Romans chapter 12 verse 2? Be ye transformed. How? You think that the renewing of, of the mind is just reading the letter. Hey, it is when the letter has been read and practiced. We read to know so that we can affect the knowledge. That you read the Bible or read the book or can quote it does not change any man. Don't you know that the truth that you know is the truth that the truth we use to change you? You shall know the truth and the truth shall make, it, make you not... Not that the truth you know made you free. Not the truth that you have known shall make you free, says the Lord. The fourth one, the last one. Prayer destroys the plans of the devil and your enemies. Prayer destroys the plan of your enemies and the devil. The Bible says, let no man say when he is tempted that he is tempted of God. For no man, for God tempts no man with evil. Now that gives us an, an understanding that temptation is when Satan projects evil. Like accident. Tragedies, sorrow, poverty, diseases, whatever form of tragedy or sorrow that any man can go through is a form of temptation. If you fall into one, it was a sign that you were prayerless. We're not supposed to be victims of sorrows. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord make it rich and he adds no sorrows. So when a man is blessed, Sorrows will be averted, will be completely eliminated from that person's life. Now, let me tell you something. When the blessing of God is not sufficient in your life, you are vulnerable to sorrow. So, to avert sorrows, pray. Have you seen that prayer? Is for your own advantage. Amen. Because you will soon be looking for a pastor to blame. For your prayerlessness. You're looking for a prophet to blame. You're looking for an ancestor to blame. You're looking for some kind of a person that didn't help you to blame. I warn you. The only thing that can avert the, the, the plans and destructive activities activities of the devil in your life and in your family is prayer yes. let me tell you something 
every one of you here must develop a life of prayer. Amen. You didn't hear me. Everyone, I don't care who you are. I don't care whether you have the Bible in your head from Genesis to Revelation. I don't I care less. If you are not in prayer, you, you are heading to a sorrow. Prayer is a call to every believer. Satan is after you. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. The only way we can rise above his activities is to pray. It's to pray. It's to what? Pray. pray. Prayer. Pray that you don't fall into. Pray you don't fall into. Pray you don't fall into that diabetes. Pray you don't fall into that that accident that is waiting. Somebody hearing me? Pray that you don't fall into that poverty. Every trap of the devil can be destroyed through prayer. Lipa hanto ke enga vida ni sakubata le fina hato sakadia le here le here le here le here le here mesiata le here le here ya hila ya hila ya hila 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 ha salika ando dosha ni ha please prepare the sahira salipa radio veliata sakitea I want to specially invite every one of you to please join me on our YouTube account, um, Facebook account, Instagram account, and every possible social media. We're there. Pastor John Anosike, hallelujah. Please join me. You will be blessed this year. So much revelations, so much visions, so much word, so much healing and miracles and manifestations and ascension into the realms of God shall be your witness this year. Guess, guess what? God is about to do amazing things this year. So join me on all of our social platforms and you will be blessed, especially YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and every other ones, and God bless you. Join us for worship every Sunday. First service, 7 a.m. Second service, 10 a.m. School of Revelation, our Bible study at 6 p.m. A time of in-depth study of God's Word. It's time to come to the knowledge of truth and grow in revelation with the bond servant of Christ, John Anosike. Healing Nights with Jesus, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. An atmosphere of miracles where the man of God takes time to minister to different cases. Christ remains the solution to every problem of man. Venue, 416 Bortrecker Road, Maitland, Cape Town, South Africa. Telephone, plus 2721-510-4029. WhatsApp, plus 2763 423-5895